We, Homo sapiens, the so-called wise man, are the last ember of a once blazing fear of fire that once roared across the earth, fed by the lives of countless human species. Our family tree was once rich with different kinds of humans, each unique, each forged by nature, each now lost to the shadows of prehistory. But what if I told you that there were once not one, but eight branches on that tree? Eight kinds of humans each walking the earth in their own way, each contributing to the story of us. Some walked upright millions of years ago, others hunted mammoths, built tools, and left no written word behind. Yet their legacy remains etched in our bones, whispered in the DNA that flows through our veins. Their story, their fire, still flickers in the shadows. Imagine for a moment. The vast landscape of the pasta, time before civilization, before cities, empires, or alphabets. Back to a time when the human story was still being written, not in ink, but in the dirt, in the fire, in the struggle for survival. This is not just a tale of Homo sapiens rising to dominance. No, this is the story of eight human species, each a chapter in a forgotten epic, an epic that science is still piecing together, and this is the real history of our kind. Homo erectus, Neanderthal, Denisovan, Homo habilis, Homo floresiensis, Homo naledi, Homo luzonensis, and finally, Homo sapiens, the final survivors. Each of these species lived and died on the same earth we now call home. Today, let's journey back, long before we ever built our great cities, long before we wrote our names on stone tablets. Let's go back to when the human story was still raw, still untold, back to a time when the flame of innovation, survival, and exploration was first sparked. First, we meet Homo habilis the toolmaker, the very beginning. Around 2.4 million years ago, in the shadowed grasslands of East Africa, Homo habilis picked up a rock and began to shape it. This small creature, more ape than man, was not mighty, but clever. He didn't simply use naturi, began to shape it. That first sharpened stone tool was more than just a survival device. It was a spark. A spark that would ignite a revolution of human innovation. Homo habilis was no king, no conqueror, but he was the ancestor of creativity itself. We call him the handyman, but really, he was the architect of the future. Then came Homo erectus. A little later, about 1.9 million years ago, Homo erectus emerged bolder, more daring, and far more adventurous. This was the pioneer, the first human species to leave Africa to venture into the unknown world. They became the first to wander across continents, spreading from Indonesia to Georgia, from China to the Levant. They were fire starters, tool users, wanderers. Imagine, standing at the edge of a vast, unexplored land, armed only with stone tools and fire. Homo erectus wasn't just surviving, they were thriving, adapting to a world full of challenges. And here's the most astonishing part they may have lived for nearly two million years longer than any other human species, including us. How many things in our world last that long? And then, there were the Neanderthals. You've probably heard of them. Most of us know the name, but few of us truly understand just how much of them still lives inside us. Neanderthals were not the brutish cavemen often depicted in popular media. They were not mindless monsters, but rather, they were deeply human. They buried their dead, they made art, and they survived the harshest of conditions during the Ice Age in Europe. Stocky, strong, and with brains larger than our own, Neanderthals were warriors, hunters of giant beasts. And yes, they met us, and they mated with us. If you have European or Asian ancestry, chances are about 1-2% to of your DNA still belongs to a Neanderthal. But around 40 zero years ago, the Neanderthals disappeared quietly, mysteriously, not with a bang, but with a whisper. Their extinction is one of the greatest mysteries of human history. Were they outcompeted by us? Did the changing climate spell their end? Or did they fade away into the shadows of time, as quietly as they had lived? Then, there are the Denisovans, the phantom species of human history. Discovered only recently, in 2010, from a few bones and teeth found deep in a Siberian cave, the Denisovans remain one of the greatest mysteries in our evolutionary story. We don't have a full skeleton of them. We don't even know what they looked like. But we do know they were powerful, and they roamed far and wide. From the highlands of Tibet to the tropical rainforests of Southeast Asia, the Denisovans left their mark. And like the Neanderthals, they also left a genetic fingerprint. 
Modern Melanesians and Aboriginal Australians carry up to 5% Denisovan DNA in their genomes. Who were they? How did they live? And how did a people so widespread simply vanish from the earth without leaving much behind? Then, in 2003, scientists made an astonishing discovery on the island of Flores in Indonesia. Tiny skeleton, just over a meter tall, with a skull no bigger than a grapefruit. At first, they thought it was a diseased Homo sapiens, but they were wrong. This was a completely new species of human Homo floresiensis, or as the media called her, the Hobbit. She was small, but she was no primitive brute. She used tools, hunted pygmy elephants, and likely even knew fire. And here's the most surprising part. Homo floresiensis may have lived as recently as 50 zero years ago, meaning while Neanderthals roamed Europe and Homo sapiens spread across continents, another kind of human was surviving in isolation on a distant island. Was Homo floresiensis wiped out by modern humans, or did rising seas seal their fate? Or, as some local islanders still whisper, did she never truly disappear? So, as we look at these ancient humans, these lost branches of our family tree, it's crucial to remember that we are not alone. In our veins flows the blood of not just Homo sapiens, but of all the species that came before us. Their stories, their struggles, their triumphs and losses are all a part of who we are. Before civilization, before empires or alphabets, the human story was being written in the shadows of the past. And we are the last survivors of that story. If you're feeling moved by these ancient tales, if you want to learn more about the forgotten branches of our family tree, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Join Prehistoric Medievals, where we dive deep into the shadows of the past, unearth the forgotten stories, and explore what it truly means to be human. Now, let's take a step deeper into the shadows, into the enigma of human evolution, where the lines blur and mysteries linger. After Homo floresiensis, another puzzle emerged, Homo naledi. Discovered in the labyrinthine caves of South Africa in 2013, Homo naledi shocked the scientific world. At first glance, their bones appeared ancient, primitive small brain, curved fingers, ape-like Shaldessa creature from two million years ago. But then came the twist. Carbon dating revealed these bones were only 250, zero years old. That meant Homo naledi coexisted with early Homo sapiens, and that was not something anyone expected. How could a species with such primitive features, such small brains, live alongside us? And even more baffling, what does it mean that Homo naledi may have practiced burial rituals? In the caves where they were discovered, the dead were carefully placed, again and again. Could creatures with brains the size of oranges truly understand the concept of death? This wasn't just another hominin, this was a riddle, a paradox. It revealed that human evolution was not a straight path, not a clean ascent towards something higher but a winding river of experimentation splitting, merging, reshaping again and again. Then, in 2019, scientists uncovered yet another surprise on the Philippine island of Luzon. Strange teeth and bones, small and unlike anything they had seen before, pointed to the existence of yet another human species. Too small to be Neanderthal, too recent to be primitive, and too advanced to be monkey-like meat Homo luzonensis. Once again, an island-dwelling species, tucked away in isolation, living its own unique story. We don't know exactly how long they lived or what they looked like in full, but one thing is clear, Homo luzonensis was human in their own way. And once again, the existence of this species challenges the long-held idea that human evolution was a straight ladder, with Homo sapiens at the top. It was never a ladder. It was a tree a tree that branched out in ways we never imagined. And now, we arrive at the last branch, the one we call home, Homo sapiens us. But when we first appeared, around 300 zero years ago, we weren't the only ones. We were one species among many. In fact, Homo sapiens spread across the earth as just one branch in a vast forest of human diversity. Our species at first was not dominant. We were not the strongest or the smartest, but we were adaptable, creative, and social. Over time, we spread fast, overcoming deserts, seas, mountains, and forests. We painted on cave walls, built tools of bone and antler, and learned to speak of things not seen gods, spirits, the past, and the future. Along the way we met them, the Neanderthals, the Denisovans, and maybe even Homo floresiensis. Sometimes we fought. Sometimes we mated. And sometimes, simply by arriving, we replaced them. By ten, zero years ago, 
all the others were gone. But why? Why did Homo sapiens survive when all the others perished? Was it our mind sour ability to imagine what wasn't there, to plan for the future, to create gods and spirits out of the unknown? Or was it our gift for language, our capacity for empathy and cooperation in large complex groups? Or perhaps it was something darker ability to outcompete, to eliminate, to survive at all costs? Some say it was pure chance, a genetic mutation, or a shift in climate that allowed us to adapt where others could not. The question haunts us still, why just us? Why did only Homo sapiens walk away from that ancient tree while all the other branches withered and fell? Maybe, just maybe, it wasn't our intelligence alone. Maybe it wasn't even our strength. Maybe it was simply that we endured, we survived. But the others, they are not gone. Their voices echo still, in the shadows, in the fossilized bones, and in the very DNA that flows in our veins. Every time you look in the mirror, realize this. You are not just a solitary figure standing alone. No. You are the continuation of millions of years of survival. You carry within you the legacy of Neanderthals, the strength of Homo erectus, the resilience of the Denisovans, and the innovation of Homo habilis. We may call ourselves the only ones, but the truth is, we are just the last ones standing. The others, they live on in us, in our very blood. The human story is not a straight line of progress. It is a tangled, branching trione that stretches back beyond memory far before written history. Each branch is a different answer to the question, what does it mean to be human? Some branches grew tall, others withered too soon. Some of our ancestors were stronger, others smarter. Some burned bright and vanished in the blink of an eye, but they all contributed to the tree of life that now lives in us. We, Homo sapiens, may think of ourselves as the culmination of evolution, the pinnacle of human progress, but the truth is far more humbling. We are not the final act of the evolutionary play. We are simply the last survivors of an epic tale, a story that has been told for millions of years. It is a story filled with heroes we'll never meet, family we never knew we had. So, next time you look in the mirror, remember, you are not just looking at you, you are looking at the faces of all those who came before. Their triumphs, their failures, their blood, it's all written in your bones, their memory endures, and every step we take forward is not just our own. It is the continuation of an ancient legacy, a family tree with many branches, each of which helped shape the human we see today. The truth is, we are not the peak of evolution. We are the continuation of a story still being written, and the story isn't over. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Join us here at Prehistoric Medievals as we continue to explore the forgotten branches of our family tree, unearth the mysteries of human evolution, and keep the legacy of our ancient ancestors alive.